Hey, what's going on everybody and welcome back to another Fallout 4 mod review and today we are finally here for the release of the Institute Pulse Carbine, a weapon mod by me. Something that has been in the making for way too long <laughs> and uh, it's finally here, thankfully, so we can move on to new projects. But in case you have been living under a rock or somehow haven't seen any of my videos uh, with updates and progress on this mod, this is going to add a brand new energy weapon into the game, specifically an Institute rifle, a weapon that will be exclusive to Institute leveled lists and you will not find it anywhere else. Much similar to the vanilla Institute laser rifle, this is only going to spawn on synths and higher ranking Institute officers and things like that. You will not be able to find it anywhere else in the Commonwealth unless you maybe find it on a legendary spawn. The goal here simply is to improve the vanilla Institute arsenal. With no mods installed, the only weapon that the Institute has access to is that crappy Institute laser rifle and pistol. And that just doesn't make sense. These guys are supposed to be the most advanced faction in the Commonwealth, and they're bringing some of the crappiest weapons, and that's just not good for me. Not to mention the fact that they only have one weapon is a bit bizarre. These guys who are so advanced and so smart, I would think that they would have different weapons to deal with different situations. So. The Institute Pulse Carbine is going to be a bit more of a heavy hitter. This thing's going to start spawning in the world after level 20, which is going to be after plasma weapons show up, as this thing's going to perform pretty similar to plasma weapons in terms of damage. Its base damage is actually a little bit higher than the plasma weapons, so it's actually a better weapon for the Institute, but it spawns later. And this concept isn't something that's going to die with this mod. Later on, when I do things like the Institute Disruptor Pistol, I want to give them more variety to their weapon sandbox that allows them to handle different tasks, which I think is something that they would be able to do. Now, as for this Pulse Carbine, innately, like I said, it's going to function very similar to a plasma weapon. It's going to shoot a singular projectile rather than a laser. It's going to have a pretty slow travel speed, but it's going to do a good bit of damage. And if you take this thing over to a weapons workbench, you can even add on a seeking feature. Because in case you didn't know, this weapon is actually based off of a weapon from Halo as part of my project to convert Halo weapons into the Fallout style. Last thing we did that to was the skewer, and now we're doing the Pulse Carbine from Halo Infinite. And the Pulse Carbine from Halo Infinite has an innate tracking feature. Whenever you shoot at an enemy, the projectile locks onto them, and I wanted that to be featured somewhere in this mod. So if you take this weapon to a weapons workbench, you can actually add that as a feature, but it is going to cost you some of your damage. Alright, enough about the details and the lore and the yada yada, let's go ahead and take this thing in game and see what you're actually going to get when you first download this mod. So here is the Pulse Carbine in its most basic format. This is as standard as it gets. Whenever you first pick this thing up, this is what it's going to look like. Standard issue on synths. It has a base damage of 19 with an extra energy damage of 18. It does use fusion cells as its ammo type, as I would assume that the Institute would try to make all of their weapons use the same ammo for consistency sake. It does have a range of 119, it has an accuracy of 147, a weight of 4.7 pounds, and a value of 154. As stated earlier, this weapon is added to the level list, so you will be able to see it spawning out in the world, and it's going to use vanilla plasma rifle animations. You're going to cup that little fusion cell, pull it out, and swap it with a new one. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and show off those animations now. I know they're not custom, but I at least want to show what it looks like and what the weapon sounds like. Alrighty, so here is the Pulse Carbine. As you can see, the standard quote-unquote iron sight is actually a little sort of, uh, I don't know, holographic reflex sight. It's just a, a little projection. Uh, that's something that I think makes a little bit more sense for the Institute rather than an iron sight on a laser weapon, which is a, a weird part of the vanilla Institute laser rifle. All right, but with that, let's go ahead and check out the animations. There you go. I think it fits pretty well. Despite being vanilla, I think that that's something that fits this weapon pretty nicely. I've always liked the vanilla plasma rifle animations anyways. Now then, if we take this thing over to a weapons workbench, we do have a handful of options. While there are only four categories, there are some pretty cool things that you can do with this guy. Starting off with the receiver section, you're going to see a pretty standard assortment of receivers, very similar to what you'd find on a vanilla laser or plasma weapon. You've got your standard capacitor, a beta wave tuner, boosted capacitor, all the stuff that's going to give you extra damage. The one difference is on receivers that would typically give you some incendiary damage, like the gamma wave emitter. 
I instead added electrical damage, so this will be pretty good against power armor and robots, which I think makes a little bit more sense for the Institute. As for barrels, we get a good assortment of barrels that are going to change the way the weapon functions. Your standard barrel is going to be a semi-automatic, slow fire rate, single projectile. The splitter is going to make this thing function like a shotgun, and it's going to launch out four different projectiles, and it's going to give you a little bit of increased damage with a little bit of a decrease to accuracy. So, this is going to be your shotgun variant. We then have a sniper barrel, which is going to give you way more damage and way more range, but it is going to make this thing a good bit heavier. And this is going to give you some slower fire rate as well. But the new projectile is actually going to shoot faster to compensate for those longer ranges. And then we have the automatic barrel, which is going to rotate and fire out projectiles very fast in an automatic fashion with a reduced damage. Now then, there are also advanced versions of each of these barrels. And the, what these are going to do is add the tracking feature that I was talking about earlier. So you can choose your standard, your split, your sniper, or your automatic barrel, and it's going to add tracking to those projectiles. We'll go ahead and show those off after we're done with the weapons workbench so that you can see how exactly that's going to function. Moving on from here, though, we do have some stock options. We do have the standard stock, which is just going to look pretty plain and vanilla. Then we have the comfort stock, where a wastelander has grabbed some burlap and duct tape and a pillow and just made this thing a little bit more comfy and easier to shoot, giving you a nice little increase to accuracy. It's important to note that attachments like this will never spawn on the Institute. This is just something that you can add at the weapons workbench. Same goes for the improvised cheek pad, where your wastelander has duct taped a pillow up on top to make a nice little cheek rest, again to give you some better accuracy and improved recoil. And then we have the Marksman stock, which is going to be a better version of the improvised cheek pad. This is one that's actually manufactured by the Institute in order to give the user some better accuracy. And then we move on to the sights. We do have a good bit of options here in the sight section, starting with the standard sights. I wouldn't exactly call these an iron sights, but these are what comes standard on the weapon. We have the reflex sight, the standard Institute reflex sight that you've seen in the vanilla game. We have a modified version of the Institute scope. I just kind of uh, tweaked the mesh a little bit to look nicer on this weapon, and I think it looks pretty cool with this profile here. Then we have a medium and long version of the scope as well. When it comes to the night vision options, I actually got permissions from JK Ruse to use his assets, and I gave it a nice little Institute retexture. So, using JK Ruse's night vision optic for the night vision scopes on this weapon, I think it looks super cool with the red and white paint job. And it uses the same model for the medium and long versions as well. And then finally, we have the recon scope. So, this is going to use a vanilla recon scope, but I just picked my favorite model out of the vanilla options and threw it on here. And this is a retexture from Gmoy, so it may not look exactly like this for you. That being said, if you're going to use a retexture, Gmoy actually has a red and black version of the recon scope that would probably suit this weapon pretty well. And then, of course, there's a long version of the recon scope to match. Alrighty, before we move on to the damage test, I do want to show off that tracking Nothing feature really quick. Here is the standard version of the weapon. It's a dummy fire, just like any standard weapon that you'd shoot in the normal sandbox. But if we switch over to something with the tracking barrel, as you can see, you lock onto them and you can fire from anywhere, ah! which does allow you to take cover. Now, there is a trade-off. This isn't an innately better barrel because with a dummy fire, you can land headshots pretty easy. Whereas with this tracking barrel, it kind of just shoots center of mass. So you will get the guaranteed hit for the most part, but it's not going to be a headshot or at the enemy's weak point. So just something to keep in mind. They kind of have different purposes. All right, and now it is time for the damage test. We're going to be testing this weapon three times. Once to get an idea for how this weapon performs right out of the box with no attachments, no perks, no anything. Just see how the weapon does against a standard Deathclaw as our baseline. And then we'll be using two fully upgraded versions, one in automatic and one with the sniper barrel, so we can get a sense of the damage you can be doing in semi and in full auto. So. Starting with the standard version of the Pulse Carbine, let's see how much damage we do to this Deathclaw, aiming for its weak point like you would do in the base game. And we actually do get him down before we have to reload. This thing does have a total of 30 shots, but a pretty slow fire rate. So, not too shabby 
for having no attachments and no perks. Let's see how we do in full auto with the best possible attachments. And we put that Death Claw down in about 19 shots, which is pretty good for a full auto weapon with a much improved fire rate. Let's see how we do with that Sniper Barrel. And we already knocked him over because of the Sniper Perk. Let's go ahead and take some pot shots at him while he gets back up. Alright, and with that, he goes down in 11 shots. Now keep in mind with the sniper barrel, you do have a reduced magazine capacity because of the increased damage. So even though we put him down much quicker, we are going to have to reload right after that. Pretty interesting. And as far as I'm concerned, I think this thing's pretty balanced. Again, you're not going to be finding this until later in the game. And it's only really available on high ranking Institute members. So it's going to be pretty rare. With that though, I think we'll go ahead and wrap this video up. That is the Institute Pulse Carbine. A long time in the making, but it is finally here. As of right now, it's already available on PC, and I will have a link down in the description below if you want to try this thing out. And there will be an Xbox port coming sometime in the near future. So just sit tight, Xbox users. It will come like all of the other mods that I have released thus far. With that, though, I do want to take a second to talk about other projects really quick in case you're interested on what else I'm going to be working on. First of all, I want to say that the Skewer and the MG69 mod have both just gotten updates as of yesterday, so I have fixed some long-standing bugs that I kind of forgot about, as well as added some nice improvements to things like the Skewer, including reduced texture sizes so that it makes a less of an impact on your load order, which I think will be a nice little touch for you guys on PC. Xbox users already had a pretty reduced version, so there's no change there. As for future mods moving forward, it was pretty clear by the last vote that we had that the shoulder mounted machine gun won by a landslide. So that will be the next full mod that I work on. That being said, I do have some other little collabs in the works, as well as another little side project I'm working on as well. Now, I can't share a too much about those little projects just yet, but you do know that the shoulder mounted machine gun is the next big mod coming very soon, and hopefully I'll have some more information and some stuff to show for those other projects soon as well. With that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to drop a rating. Go check out the Pulse Carbine using the link down below, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Peace! And really quick, I'd like to make a shout out to all of our patrons. Your donations are greatly appreciated and really help to support the channel and videos just like this one. So again, thank you.